I'm James Kyle, uh, engineer at Cloudflare, uh, big open source contributor, uh, do Marionet.js. Some of you might have heard of it, um, probably not. Uh, there's also 6 to 5, which is a new project that I have just started working on the past few months, which I'm here to talk to you about today. To put it simply, uh, 6 to 5 allows you to take new language features in JavaScript and compile them into JavaScript that will run in browsers and Node.js today. Um, these new features are what is part of the uh, ECMAScript 6 standard. Um, and if you hear people refer to ECMAScript 6 or ES6, uh, what they're referring to is the formal standard, um, which is better known as JavaScript. Um, ES6 is set to be finalized uh, in June of <laughs> June of this year. Uh, they pushed that back a few times, so hopefully. Uh, there's a lot of new features uh, in ES6. Um, they're mixed between new uh, syntax features and new APIs that you can work with. Um, it's a very big addition <laughs> to the language, um, and it's really exciting. Uh, if you want a better breakdown of these, if you go to 6 to .org, um, there's a whole tour of them. Um, it's really good. Uh, these features are being implemented in browsers in the IOJS uh, right now. Um, so you should, uh, you can see a chart of them right now. Um, a lot of red. Um, it doesn't bode well for using it today. Um, some of you might say, oh, so I can't use it, um, but um, I'm here to tell you that you can uh, with 6 to 5. Um, so what is it? It's a uh, transpiler, um, otherwise known as source to source compiler, uh, if you want technical terms. Um, basically what that means is it's, uh, it takes one programming language and outputs another. Um, and it sounds kind of scary, but you probably already use one if you're using something like Uglify.js or um, Clojure Compiler. Those are just outputting JavaScript to smaller JavaScript. Um, but instead of that, 6 to 5 takes ES6 code and compiles it down to ES5, um, which will run in most places today. Um, and it looks something like this, um, which you'll notice is pretty clean and simple to read and probably something you're likely to write today. Um, but uh, this, is a, this is a really important part of why 6 to 5 um, is being written um, because um, a lot of these features can be implemented this way um, without too much difficulty. Um, and while we're doing this, we maintain really strict spec compliancy. Um, so we follow the ES6, so we read it on a daily basis and make sure that we're following it strictly. Um, and so when it's implemented, you can still run the same exact code. Um, and we're so focused on this that today we have more ES6 support than anyone else. Um, this is 71%. Um, that number is going up all the time. Um, we're actually running out of ES6 features to implement. Um, except for the ones that we can't implement because they require special stuff, um, like proxies, which are there, um, and typed arrays. Um, the thing with typed arrays, though, is um, it's actually the most supported ES6 feature. Um, you can find almost every browser, um, except these tests are run against IE8. Um, <laughs> so um, <laughs> they, they don't have as much. I think if you would run it against IE10 or Chrome, you'd probably see somewhere around 80, 85. Um, proxies still aren't implemented by anyone, but yeah. Um, but yeah, this is IE8. Um, and if you compare that to the latest Chrome, it's more than twice the support. Um, and the little bit you see above there is actually the experimental flag. Um, so it's not even enabled by default in there. Um, so still have way more. So how does one use 6 to 5? Um, that's a question we've been really focused on and really want to make it simple for people to use because otherwise they won't. Um, so today there's a bunch of ways of using it. Um, first of which is the 6 to 5 uh, CLI, which this works a lot like a lo any other CLI I've used. Um, takes one 
uh, file or directory and outputs another one with source maps and everything you'd want. Uh, you can customize the output. Um, there's also six to five node, um, which runs just like the normal node CLI, except it will compile ES6 code ahead of time with six to five and then run it, um, just as it would always. Um, uh, if that, those don't fly for you, there's also the six to five register. So if you ever use CoffeeScript, they have the exact same thing. Um, this just compiles every subsequent require call um, that ends with .js or .es6 or .65 um, and compiles it ahead of time um, and also include our nice polyfill. Um, if you aren't working on something very serious, um, you can also include our browser version, um, which we don't recommend compiling in the browser unless you have a specific use case. Um, but if you do want to, you can just add type text 6 to 5 or ES6 or ECMAScript 6, and it will compile those and run just like it would otherwise. Um, there's also a ton of plugins. Um, these aren't just li limited to JavaScript land. There's also sprockets on there. Um, 6 to 5 is actually going to become a Sprocket's default in 4.0, uh, so the whole Rails community will have it. Um, but um, these are really great. They're, we spent a lot of time on these, and many of them are actually built by people who really know what they're talking about. Um, the Gulp and Grunt ones by uh, Sindre Thorhus built many of them. Uh, Sprockets was built by Joshua Peak, um, one of the maintainers of Sprockets. Uh, Broccoli and Ember CLI. Uh, um, is now maintained by Stefan Penner, who is a maintainer of Ember CLI and I believe Bro Broccoli. Um, so these are so really solid and they're official um, and we make sure they're up to date all the time um, and fix any bugs that come up. So um, what about the code that 6 to 5 generates um, and how flexible is it? Um, well, it's another thing that's really important to us um, and the mapping from ES6 to ES5 isn't always a one-to-one -one relationship. Um, for example, um, modules, you have probably used CommonJS or AMD or my custom module loader.js, um, and we compiled all of them. Um, and um, we can even, you can even just omit module syntax altogether um, if you want. Um, so CommonJS is a default, it's used by Node and Webpack and Browserify. Um, UMD is great for library authors if you want to do that. Um, you can even create your own. That don't suggest it. Um, <laughs> but if you see something missing, open an issue and we'll make it available to you. Um, so um, we also give control over blacklisting and whitelisting specific ES6 features. Um, so if you're like, oh, every uh, environment I support has classes already, I don't want you to transpile classes. It's just one little thing, an option in there. Um, and there's also a bunch of optional transforms. Um, there's stuff to doing with async functions with Bluebird, um, if you want super efficient promises and things along that. I'm not entirely familiar with it. Um, yeah, they're all documented on the site, by the way. Um, but this is a really exciting one, uh, non-ES6 features, um, because there are a lot of things going on in the JavaScript community right now. Um, a lot of people are trying to extend the syntax, uh, TypeScript, JSX, um, the at script and stuff like that. Um, so we want to bring as many of these to people as possible. Um, or we want to bring ES6 to as many people as possible. Um, so we're willing to support these things so that um, it works out of the box for you. Um, first of which is JSX. Um, so after Michael's talk, if you want to also use all the things he's talk he will talk about uh, with 6 to 5. <laughs> Do it. Um, there's also flow types. Um, it, uh, you'll still want to use Facebook's um, uh, server thing, um, but we, it, it'll run through 6 to 5 just fine. Um, and finally, ES7. Um, because ES6 wasn't enough, um, <laughs> we also wanted to support just ideas for the future. Um, we support these under an experimental flag. Um, features um, that are very hesitantly put into ES7 right now, um, not even all that formally. Um, probably won't want to use these today, um, but it, it's preparing for the future, um, which brings me to the final topic, 
the future. Um, what we really get with 6 to 5, which excites me, um, is that we have the ability to track standards much faster than we ever have before. Um, we can use features that are written in standards immediately rather than waiting five years for the, latest, or the oldest supported IE to su also support it. Um, and we can create this tight feedback loop between the people who are writing the standards and the people who are using it um, that just hasn't existed in the past. Um, a spec writer might have to wait years before someone uh, actually is using what they're implementing, they're, they're designing. Um, and I really can't undersell how important that is for a modern language. Um, and it'll give us the ability to evolve much faster. Um, and that's really friggin' cool. Um, so uh, that's 6 to 5. Um, you should check it out at 6to5.org, like now. Um, you can also follow me um, if that's your thing. Um, so, yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs>